we, we've done well so far in the cup. But games like this are the ones that I find we really do seem to struggle in, where the team is worse than us, like Weymouth. This is a, basically a dead cert kind of Weymouth game, and I really want to see us actually do better for once. Into the black. And welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Life. If you're still enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. So today, we've got a game in the league, some games in the league, but then we've got more of the cup, because I'm very interested in how we can do in that competition this year. With the right draws, we genuinely could go quite far. Whitport in the FA Cup. Yeah, it is a bit in it. I, I don't know what it is about us in the FA Cup. We've got to the... We've just kind of... I, I figured we got to the first round. I know a lot of you that have been playing with the database have got to the first round. Some of you got to the third round long before me in this save. And I don't know what it is. We just have the worst sort of fortune and just bad performances in the FA Cup so far. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. Something else, though. Um, so, Luton have recalled Chris Con Clark, which, okay, fine. That's surprising. But I've actually never had a team do that before. Normally, I send them back. Uh, I am the one who returns the loans. But annoyingly now, the game is still telling me that I can't have any more lone players. We only have three now. Um, this is quite frustrating. Unless it literally is the rule that, and this could well be the case, that you can only have six players ever through the entire season, no matter when they are and how many at one concurrent period. I thought it was that you could only have a maximum of six at any one time. But it does seem that it doesn't seem to make any difference. So this is, might cost us. Because now we're literally left with, well, <laughs> Mellors, Martin and Healy. Uh, which is just terrific. So we're really, really short on that right-hand side now. And there's a couple of guys I found that I want to bring on alone, but the game just won't even let me put the, own, the loan offers in. So once again, we find ourselves in a problem where we have no players um, because it's there's like two days off in between. We're getting a lot of these games lately and it is uh, frustrating, but we're just going to have to do our best. We're going to drop out Adabate and bring in Perez de Gracia. I can't really afford to drop both of them this time around. Um, the rest of the guys are okay, but lordy lord. So the bench... Do we, well, there's no point in having Adabati on the bench. I'll have Winfield on one side. Screw it, I'll have Connor Emery on the bench as well. That'll be the bench. With a wide playmaker on this side as well as an inverted winger. They're very much going towards the centre. But nevertheless, come on, let's have this. We've had to rotate, they've had to rotate. I assume this is one of the rescheduled matches that we've got in hand on some people. So we're going to need big performances from some of the lads today. But they showed quality in that cup game. They've showed a lot of quality lately away at Carlisle. We've been better away from home, it seems, lately than we have been at home. They should have beaten Morecambe at home. Didn't. Should have beaten Crawley at home. Lost the game. But yet we go 3-0 away at Chester, 5-1 away at Carlisle. Um, those are the kind of performances that really do make me wonder what's going on there. But you never know. Putman Cartley's ball. Back post. And that is a penalty, which Sam Cartwright will not be taking. I know he's scored one before and he does have good penalties, but I just kind of trust Curtis... Uh, Thomas a little bit more just because he's so good although he will probably miss this now he's up to eight finishing now so he has started to improve on the finishing side of things this season and it's not really any surprise given how many goals he's been scoring so far and smashes it down the middle again to the side don't know why I said that 18 goals for the year for Curtis Thomas we lead away at Sutton this is a big big performance because so far we've got none of the ball absolutely none of it um but we've won a penalty given ourselves a chance to grab the lead maybe the defenders can do a job today who knows I'm gonna up the tempo a little bit earlier this time because we really are struggling to keep hold of the ball and maybe we just need to get it forward a bit faster oh run the side for thomas what what a save from the goalkeeper but what a lovely little run i feel like i've got like my two regen stars in putman kitely and curtis thomas that i am maybe overhyping somewhat but i don't know i've really enjoyed their work so far in this save gotta look long oh he's actually found him and putman Kitely, look at that for a first touch curtis thomas is completely available as well he's got to square it the one time he doesn't do it oh come on ben that was your chance thomas now with the free kick He's at it again. Why is he on free kicks, by the way? I thought that was BPK's domain. He's on the pitch as well. Does anyone else notice that the game sometimes just randomly changes your free kick takers? Because I've had this happen quite a lot. It's not the best free kick, but it's in the back of the net anyway. He's scored again. It's 2-0. I'm convinced he's magic. Oh, that's poor. Got caught out there. Go and win that header. That's a good clearance from Kwame Sigwe. And Putman Kiley can keep this in and find CT. And this defender is toast. Goes past him like he's not even there. Ball across. Wait, Kling, and it's over the bar. Is that goalkeeper about to do something stupid? No, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, the defender kind of is. Billum's in. Can he finish it? No, he can't. Great save from Rowley to make up for his error there. I suppose his error. It's more the defender's error. You can just feel when the keeper's going to do something dumb. 2-0 is still a dangerous one, though. Only takes one long ball over the top for us to miss a header on or something. Like that! <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I able to do this on demand now? What the hell? I'm having a great time. I don't know about you, I'm having a bloody lovely time. I really do want to see if it actually is about those two attributes that we really like that make a player so good in that role. Because Martin's really lacking a lot of other areas. But, oh God, here comes Curtis Thomas again. Round the side for Wakeling. And he couldn't quite do it. 
Bulgarian's got it as well. That's quite a... Oh, good. And Sutton are back in the match. Terrible. Um, the defending there again. We shouldn't be letting that happen. Like, we've got a breakaway here. It's a poor ball, admittedly. But, like, again, the defender should be doing better than this. He gets to the correct position as well. He's the right side of him. And then he just lets him have the shot. Let's just see this out now, shall we? Um, well, where did all these sudden shots from Sutton come from? I think they're all long ranges, but Mellis does really well there. But we've... Oh, here we go. Curtis Thomas with the pace again. He's a long... The angle's so wide, though. He's never... We've got the shot in, at least. Try to hit the strikers. Or anyone. Mellis has done all right so far. Uh oh block. Lau cleared. Kasimba, no! Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> well, we just bungled that one, didn't we? 80th and 88th minute goals. Um, yeah, didn't get blocks in, didn't get clearances, didn't defend well enough. It's been coming. Um, like, Kasimba... He... <sighs> Keep us a bit unsighted, maybe. He reacts a bit late. Christ on a bike. A frustrating one, to be sure, but they are going to happen sometimes. You're not going to be able to hold every single lead. Uh, sometimes teams will just be able to throw more at you. Are you joking? If they let them score any a winner, though, that will change things. Right, okay, tipped over. I don't know where this sudden, um, like, scoring ability and acceleration has come from from Sutton, but it, we've had this happen to us before in games where they just out of nowhere, a team will just fly. Like Morecambe, actually, earlier this season. We managed to deal with that particular uh, storm, but today it was not quite to be. We didn't have the, the big enough lead. Oh, please, no. Please, no. Don't do this to me. Okay. I mean... You had options, but sure, that'll do. There we go. That will surely see this game out. Yeah, two all here at Gander Green Lane. Frustrating to be two goals up going into the last 10 minutes and throw it all away. Uh, I guess that's just one of the things you're going to have happen sometimes. Not the best performance defensively again. Uh, yeah, um, tired players don't exactly make for the best. Luca Riley has somehow got a good rating in this one, I suppose. But we're still right on the bubble uh, of the playoff situation, which is, I guess, fine. Right, some games off camera. Back for another little break into the cup. Right then, we're back. Um, we've had a tough spell of games off camera against some big sides, but there's one thing that's gone very much in our favour. But we'll start off with the game against Halifax. This was a weird one. Um, it's almost the exact reverse of the Sutton game. We went 1-0 down early on in this one as the goalkeeper was just unable to keep out the strike from Nolan. Again, poor from O'Reilly. Really not great. 1-0. We then considered a penalty and suddenly found ourselves 2-0 down at home inside 15 minutes. Brilliant stuff. But what we did have on our side is that they play a 4-3-3 and were generally pretty good against teams that play 4-3-3s. Eventually, the ball does find its way into the box. I think off of Galvin. Ball across. Eventually, it's knocked. So I don't even know how Putman Cutley gets a touch on that, but it doesn't matter because it's a goal. And then with 15 minutes to go, lovely work again. A very deserved equaliser. I'll say, add about his ball in. Get a bit fortunate with the way the ball breaks off the post. Back to Jacob Wakeling, and he's able to score the equaliser for us. We nearly scored the winner late on, but weren't quite good enough. Next up, we hosted Haven, who again played a 4-3-3. And this time, we really got what we deserved against them. Uh, terrible defending here. Eventually, the ball just breaks into the path of Curtis Thomas. He's practically running backwards, and he still manages to slot that home for 1-0. After that, he basically took over the match, uh, whipping a lovely corner in. And there was Ruben Lau to knock it near post. 2-0 up over Haven, and surely game dead. But thankfully, there was still time for one more goal in the 91st minute. Uh, this is just, once again, he just peels away from the defender. And the ball has practically gone past the goal, but he's still able to smash it home for his second of the night and an assist. We then find ourselves in the midst of an almost identical game against Bottom Welling. Once again, Curtis Thomas with the free kick this time goes in. We weren't really doing much beyond that. And again, he just took over this time, putting a corner in again. I think this time for Jaden Forrester to score the second goal to wrap this up with five minutes left. But as is often the case, he always found time for a little bit more, knocks it down here, lovely will butt through from Sean Martin, and of course Thomas takes a touch, sets himself, smashes it in again, two goals and an assist on the night again. And last but not least, I would argue a very lucky uh, win this one. Went 1-0 down early doors, half an hour into the game, we weren't playing well, they weren't getting a lot of chances, but they were doing stuff. We then won a fortunate penalty, which of course Curtis Thomas was able to dispatch for yet another goal. But then in the second half, 68 minutes on the clock, we just found something. Galvin's ball was whipped across. There was Putman Kiley at the back post to score another goal for the season to give us the win in the end. All of which leaves us sitting fifth. 56 points. We're seven clear of the releg uh, not the relegation zone, of dropping out of the playoffs. And we have a game in hand now as well. It is looking very, very good. Now, we did have the advantage of that. We, team we seem to be quite good against teams that play 4-3-3 because we can just get so much width against them. And they tend to play quite narrow. So that was really a good sign. We probably should have won uh, the game against Halifax as well, but it doesn't matter because we're still playing fantastically well. In addition to that, we made a lot of money in the month of January. We made a profit of £23,000, which has really kept the, the club afloat. And one more quick thing. I brought in Daniel Ojo from Halifax Town on a free. He's only on a non-contract, but I wanted to... He just seems to have what I like. He's got good aggression, good work rate, decent enough crossing and dribbling, some decent physicals. He's tall, and he's okay at the defensive side of things. Just to give us a little bit more backup over Ryan Galvin, because I don't really trust Morgan Mellers, and he's a loan signing. There's loads of loans available. We can't sign any of them. It sucks. But nevertheless, we're in really good form right about now, and... 
it's all thanks to CT. Quite frankly, he's just driving the team forward. I love him. We we've done well so far in the cup. But games like this are the ones that I find we really do seem to struggle in, where the team is worse than us, like Weymouth. This is a, basically a dead cert kind of Weymouth game, and I really want to see us actually do better for once. We are basically as fully rested as we can be, which is nice. We can put out as stronger side as we would like, really. I will just get... I might make a new one, because obviously we need more players on the bench this time around. I'll put Sean Martin on the bench as well. So the bench will be Martin, Mellers, Forrester, Hammett, Lal, Ojo, and Perez de Gracia. This needs to be a win, because that extra cash again, particularly in the month of February, where we've got quite a lot of away games, could be quite important. But I guess it is worth noting that they are in a lower division than us, and are bottom of that division. Well, nearly bottom. They're de facto bottom. So let's go out here, win ourselves another game in the cup. I fully expect to see a Curtis Thomas show again. Knocks it down straight away for Kasimba. He is uncannily good in the air. Uh, he's already through. He's already scored! Inside 16 seconds, Curtis Thomas has scored and given us the lead in the cup. I've never had a player that's quite such an enigma as this man. He has eight finishing, no composure or anticipation. Lovely work from Pat McCartney as well, but he's got so much work to do. Takes it on the chest and just, just takes the shot so quickly. 25 goals for the year. I've just never seen anything like it. It feels like a lot of the centre-backs he must be winning headers against have got to be at least your 6-2, 6-3. And yet he consistently outjumps them. Oh, that's a really good ball through. And that's a really good goal, unfortunately. Eddie and Hun scores Brackley. I mean, both teams have scored with their first shots on target, but this is what I mean. I felt like it was a good start for us, but we kind of just let it slip after this. It's a great ball through. The defender, he's there. And then everybody pushes up to try to play the offside trap and they break it. And that's just on us from bad defending. Oh, cleared away. Wakeling's got this and he actually does get it. But now we need Curtis Thomas. There he is. Takes a touch. Goes round the defender. Can he finish it again? No, he can't. Guts the shot away at least, but he couldn't quite get the ball in the net that time. An almost concerning amount of space. Go on, win it, Galvin. Yes. Looking long. Can Thomas win the header? You, he doesn't even need to win the header. He's brought the ball down. Oh, and another big save from the goalkeeper. Because we haven't really done a... Gr I mean, we've done a few little bits since we took the lead at that point, but not enough. We didn't force our advantage on them enough. Oh, that's a good ball through as well. Wow. I mean, I think we're a bit hard done by to be behind here, but then it is a cup match, so that's um, just how it goes, unfortunately, it would seem. Wow, we really just... Any even game in the cup, we just seem to come out on the complete wrong side of things. When we even struggle to beat lower stuff, thankfully we showed a bit in the last cup game, but that is just a great finish from Woodrup. But Christ on a bike. Given how well we've played lately, this is super disappointing. These guys are bottom of the division below us. Wakeling knocks it down for Kasimba. That's a good ball out wide for Billum. That's a very good ball, actually. Oh, I thought he was going to get on the end of that as well. Billum. Putman Kitely. Thomas! <laughs> He's done it again! 26th of the year for Curtis Thomas. Another brace. Two more assists for BPK as well. We're back level. Thoroughly deserved, I would have to say. But once again, he is just unplayable. I thought the chance had gone, actually, when he didn't get on the end of this. But Billum, really nice work to find Putman Kitely. Knocks it down on the full volley, smashing it. He's so good. They're getting so much of the ball with their striker that I actually am going to try to um, tackle him harder and really get in on him. Because I think he's they were, we're allowing him to hold the ball up too much. And if we could just get around him a bit more and take him out the game, they might have to play slightly differently. Come on. Pop one on someone's head, Luke. And oh, it's at the post. We've been decent in this game. I, I think we if we were to get a goal now, I think we would deserve it. Here we go. Thomas again. Uh, two players around him, but it doesn't matter because Wakeling's in here and he smashes it home. He's not going to get the assist on it this time, uh, Curtis Thomas, but he still did the work in the lead up there. Jacob Wakeling scores his 16th goal of the season. I would be very not surprised at all if he comfortably gets into the 20s as well. I mean, he gets fortunate there, Thomas. He doesn't do particularly well, but Wakeling again, showing that raw finishing ability just to smash that home for 3-2. And that, my friends, is a bit more like it. Look at the possession coming down in the second half as well. They've just not been able to get the ball up to their striker. Got a lot of people in good positions. Wakeling nearly won it back again. And now he has won it. What's he going to do here? He's got to find Billum, surely. Billum's going to have to look back across those tons of players in the box. He finds nobody, but Thomas will come and collect it. Putman Kiley's gone inside. Oh, he's still got it. Can he find the cross? You bet your ass he can. Oh my God, what happened there? <laughs> the game seems to have died a little bit now, but we have turned it on in the second half. Uh, we've actually completely pulled the possession all the way back, which means we must have had at least 57% second half, uh, which is exactly what I was hoping would happen. We've just penned them in, given them nothing in that second half. What a way to turn that cup game around. Um, to be behind twice. No, to go in front, then go behind, then come back to win is terrific. Another man of the match performance from CT. Great performance from Ben putman Cartley. Our two regen lads are absolutely killing it at the moment. That is brilliant. And we won again, thank God. Three wins in the build base trophy, and we're actually getting somewhere now. Come on, let's get another lower league team. There we go. Five point, yeah, five and a half thousand pounds again in the bank, which will really help us. 
And he truly is a god. Oh my goodness. Now he really is starting to progress um, to an insane level. Before, this was all over the shop, and now it seems to have actually adapted properly. But yeah, he's got, what, 41 goal contributions in 34 matches for us so far this year. I can easily see him contribute to 50 goals this year. It's ridiculous. Right, who are we going to get? 39 teams left in it. Come on. Give us someone winnable. Geisley or Southport? <laughs> Perfect. That's basically given us another real chance at going and yet another round. And the big deal is here, prize money for this round is 11, uh, nearly 11 point, well, 11 and a quarter thousand pounds. That's big money for us. We, we If we can win that, legitimately brilliant. Because then, after the round after that, you never know, another 13,000 pounds. We could basically pay for our season just with a good run in the Builder Base Trophy. I'm kind of excited about it now. Well, I mean, that seems like the perfect thing to do as the next episode as well, with Yeovil starting off there, a few games in between, coming back for some more builder base trophy goodness where we are actually doing things for once. So if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, um, things are just going from better to better for us, and it is truly fantastic to see. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, drop a like on the video if, you, if you've enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'll be awesome as well. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays, so go follow over there too. Link in the description. And I'll see you guys next time for some more of this goodness as we really are plowing towards a fairly competent end to the season with potentially a cup run in there and hopefully a little playoff push too. The higher we can finish though, the better because you know how these playoffs are. Just want to give ourselves a shot at maybe something magical this year. Anyway, see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Cappy Bar. Bye-bye.